I want to go over some inequalities, and inequalities work a lot like equations, um, except you don't have equal to directly. Alright, so for example, in this first one we have negative 2 is less than or equal to 3 minus 2x less than 24. So this means this 3 minus 2x in the middle is sandwiched between negative 2 and 24. And since this is linear, and you can tell it's linear because we have an x to the first power, I can treat it just like a linear equation. So you want to get x by itself. So here I'm going to subtract by 3 first. And so I end up with negative 5 is less than or equal to negative 2x, which is less than um, 21. From there, I want to divide by a negative. And you have to remember that any time you multiply or divide by a negative, you flip your inequality. And that's something that people forget a lot. So here we have positive 5 halves is greater than or equal to x, which is greater than 21 halves. All right, again, when you divide or multiply by a negative, you have to flip your signs. So what this means then is that my x is the smallest it can be is 21 halves, and the greatest it can be is 5 halves. And when I say the smallest is 21 halves, it's not exactly true. It can't be 21 halves itself, but anything minusculely larger than that is okay. And uh, it can be 5 halves. And the way I know that are in the inequalities. Uh, this is a or equals to, I get a bracket. If there's no, if it's strictly greater than or strictly less than, I use a parenthesis. And infinity always gets an, uh, a parenthesis. All right, let's try another one. So this time we have something that's quadratic. And so since it's not linear, we have to change our strategy a little bit. Um, so this is x squared less than or equal to 14x minus 49, and this should not say equals 0. That's just a mistake. Okay, so here um, what I can do is get everything on one side. Instead of isolating the x, I have to get everything on one side, and I want to factor. So here I have x squared minus 14x plus 49 is less than or equal to 0, and this expression factors as x minus 7 times x minus 7, or we might say x minus 7 squared, and I know that because I'm thinking of two things that multiply to give me 49, add to give me negative 14, that would be negative 7 and 7. Alright, so from there we need to set up what we call a sign chart. So I pick a negative 7, because that's my 0 here, and now I want to pick some um, test values to just decide whether x minus 7 squared would be positive or negative over these intervals. And what I mean is, let's pick something smaller than negative 7, like maybe negative 10, and something bigger than negative 7, how about 0? And all I care about is whether they make x minus 7 positive or negative, or x minus 7 squared, actually. Okay, so I'll do a little table like this. If I pick negative 10, I get x minus 7, I mean, negative 10 minus 7 is negative, but when you square it, you get a positive. So that means anything less than negative 7 will result in a positive in my, my quadratic here. If I put plug in 0, I get 0 minus 7, which is negative, and that squared results in a positive as well. And so you can see here that this thing is always positive except exactly at negative 7. Uh, and the reason is, is actually, if you graph this guy, you'll see that you get a parabola that hits the axis exactly at 7. So the only time it hits 0 is at 7, and everywhere else it's positive. So how do would you consider then when it's less than or equal to 0? Well, the only thing you have is when it's equal to 0, which would be 7. Okay, and so since we're trying to write these in intervals, I'm going to write 7 in squiggly brackets to mean the set that only has the number 7 in it. Okay, so let's try another polynomial one, and hopefully this one won't just result in one value that, to consider. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and factor this guy. That's x minus x times x minus 9. And here we have difference of squares. So that's going to be x minus 2 times x plus 2, all greater than 0. And so here I'm going to pick a sign chart. And so I'm going to have uh, my zeros, which are going to be negative 2, 0, 2, and 9. And I'll need to pick some test points in between these places. So something smaller than negative 2. How about negative 10? How about negative 1 between negative 2 and 0, and positive 1 between 0 and 2? Even though I can pick whatever I want, we typically pick, typically pick something that's easy to calculate. And uh, how about something greater than 9? How about 100? Okay, 
Now um, for my table, I'm going to set up my table again. I have x, x minus 9, x minus 2, and x plus 2. And I'm going to pick the test values negative 10. If I plug in negative 10 here, I get a negative. Uh, negative 10 minus 9 is negative. Negative 10 minus 2 is negative. And negative 10 plus 2 is negative. So multiplying four negatives together, anytime you have an even number of negatives that results in a positive, I get a positive. So that means that anything below negative 2 gives me a positive expression in this polynomial here. All right, playing this game again, we have negative 1. If you plug in negative 1, you should get negative, 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 and negative 1 plus 2 is positive. Since I only have, I, mean, I have an odd number of negatives, this results in a negative. So anything between negative 2 and 0 is negative. All right, doing the same thing for 1. I get positive, negative, negative, positive, which will result in a positive, right? An, an even number of negatives will be a positive. I plug in 3, I have positive, negative. Negative 3 minus 2 is positive. I mean positive 3 minus 2 is positive, sorry. And then 3 plus 2 is 5, so that's positive as well. And so the result is negative. And again, we don't really care what the value is, we only care if it's positive or negative. So you don't have to sit there and plug in the calculator a lot. You can just sit, uh, just think about it for a little bit. If I plug in 100, I should get positive. 100 minus 9 is positive. Minus 2 would be positive, and plus 2 is positive as well. So we get positives across the board, which results in a positive. Okay, now let's think back to what the question was originally asking. It was asking for when is, when is this polynomial greater than 0? Greater than 0 is another way of saying positive. So now I look at my sign chart, and I see, okay, here, here, and here is where this thing is positive. And a lot of times students get mixed up and put in their test values they picked for their in their answers. But remember the test values had nothing to do with the, with the actual expression other than they weren't our zeros. So you can't put those in your answer. My answer is going to be uh, negative infinity to negative 2 and then 0 to 2 and then 9 to infinity. Okay, and so uh, this this little union symbol means that I'm joining these um, intervals together, and so I have like three pieces that I'm kind of bordering together here. All right, now polynomial inequalities have a, um, are a little bit more involved, but they're extremely useful. Okay, we have a couple more examples. Let's look at this one. It says the absolute value of x plus six is less than 18. And if you remember what absolute value means, it means your distance from 0. So the distance of x plus 6 has to be less than 18 units away from 0. So that means I could go in the negative 18 direction, or I could go in the positive 18 direction. I just have to be within that range. And so this ends up just being a linear inequality. And all I have to do is subtract 6 from everything. So here I get negative 24 is less than x, which is less than 12. And there it is. So there's really... It's not as involved as a polynomial, a higher degree polynomial inequality. I just, ha I just have to go from negative 24 to 12. All right, lastly, we're going to have a rational inequality. We have 4x minus 1 over x plus 2 is less than 1. And so something you need to point out at the beginning is that x cannot be negative 2 because you cannot have a 0 in the denominator. That would be a domain issue. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply both sides of this thing by x plus 2. And so when I do that, in my first expression on the left, the x plus 2's cancel out, and I'm left with 4x minus 1 is less than, and on the right hand side I end up with x plus 2. Again, this is just a linear equality, inequality, and so we know how to solve those pretty easily. Get x on one side by itself, so here I subtract x, I get 3x, and add the 1 over, I get 3x is less than 3. So dividing both sides by 3, I get x is less than 1. And so then we know my solution is going to be negative infinity to 1. Wait a minute, though. We have to account for something. x can't be negative 2. So what I have to do to adjust for that 
is I cut out negative 2. And the way you cut out negative 2 in an interval is just like this. So this expression means uh, I can take anything up to negative 2, but not including negative 2, and then anything after negative 2 up until 1, not including negative 2, right? So we just essentially cut it out. Okay, I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, inequalities show up a good bit, and they're extremely useful. You need to be able to manipulate them. So if you have any questions, again, let me know, and thanks for watching.